The Lady or the Tiger, was written by Frank R. Stockton, a Philadelphia-born author, and first published in the American magazine The Century in 1882. Stockton gained recognition for his unconventional and humorous fairy tales, which became popular and were adapted into various forms such as plays, radio dramas, and referenced in songs and TV shows. Renowned illustrator Maurice Sendak even created illustrations for two of Stockton's tales, The Griffin and the Minor Canon, and The Bee Manor Orn, receiving the Lewis Carroll Shelf Award in 1963. Stockton's repertoire extended to science fiction, adventure, and his novel The Adventures of Captain Horn, published in 1895, became a bestseller in the United States. The Lady or the Tiger is arguably Stockton's most famous fable and has attained the status of a classic in American literature. The story unfolds in an ancient kingdom, as depicted in European fairy tales, ruled by a semi barbaric king, characterized by his grandiose and unrestricted ideas. The king is described as vibrant and authoritative, with a penchant for transforming his whimsical notions into reality, finding satisfaction in rectifying injustice and eliminating irregularities. In the kingdom, the king has devised a peculiar method of determining the guilt or innocence of a defendant. The accused is brought to a public arena where they are faced with two identical doors. Behind one door lies a hungry tiger ready to devour them, while behind the other door stands a fair lady whom they are compelled to marry. The defendant remains unaware of what lies behind each door, but is required to make a choice. The narrator hails the system as perfectly fair, producing unambiguous outcomes. The king justifies the fairness of the system by emphasizing the subject's freedom to choose, believing that the moment they open a door, their guilt or innocence is proven. The king has a beloved daughter, whom he treasures above all else, and whose spirit matches his own in fervor and imperiousness. When he discovers that the princess has been involved with a young courtier, he immediately imprisons the young man and prepares for his public trial. The king orders the most savage and relentless beasts to be placed in the tiger cages, while judges search for the fairest and most beautiful maiden to serve as the potential bride for the young man. If he is found innocent Otto in the day of the trial, the young man enters the arena amid a mix of admiration and anxiety from the crowd. He pays his respects to the princess, unaware that she has tirelessly sought to uncover the secret of the two doors since his arrest. Possessing more power, influence, and force of character than anyone previously involved in such a case, the princess has successfully determined which door conceals the tiger and which one holds the lady. Furthermore, she knows the identity of the lady and harbors a sense of jealousy towards her. The princess has witnessed or imagined glances of admiration exchanged between her lover and a fair lady, adding to her doubts and impulsive nature. She does not wish for her lover to perish, but she equally resents the idea of him marrying another woman. When the lover turns to the princess, seeking her guidance in choosing a door, she discreetly directs him towards the right door. At this point, the narrative of the short story concludes, leaving readers with the crucial question, now, the point of the story is this, did the tiger come out of that door, or did the lady? At this critical juncture, the narrative takes a notable turn. Previously told in the omniscient third person, the story now transitions to a first-person narrator who directly engages with the reader. The narrator reiterates the core dilemma and its significance, underscoring the stakes involved. Ultimately, the narrator poses the pivotal question to the reader, inviting them to determine the outcome by deciding which came out of the open door. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.